Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter, and today I'm going to be sharing three different porthole cards based on one I'd made previously. I had showed this card on social media and people went a little bit nuts for it. I didn't think it was all that great, but you guys liked it. So I'm going to be making one with the porthole die and then I'll make some others using the waves die that goes with it. And I'm going to add in some Gerda Steiner stamps if you need something other than octopi, octopuses, which were in my previous card from the subbing in set, which is really a fun set. But this one, I laid my stamps out so that they lined up in the way that I need to need them to for the porthole so that they're going to land in the right spot. And this is going to go underneath of the dies. And literally, I'm just going to slap some color on there. <laughs> it's not very exciting. I don't even know which colors I used. I just grabbed different blue greens and greens and blues. The trick to making them look like there's a background and then a foreground with the fish in it is to put some darker color behind the fish and sort of join the dark spots. So you can almost picture there's a, a dark cloud behind one of the sharks and then it kind of continues on down below, that sort of thing, just so that it doesn't look like they all surround them. You don't want to make them look like they're outlined. And so they're starting and stopping and then I'll switch to a lighter color and join those areas and then a lighter color still and just keep joining them until the background is darker. And of course, with stuff like this, if you've taken my underwater classes, you know, you just keep going over the water again and again until you're happy with it. That's all. And I'm going to add some color into each of the fish. I'm picturing them being really deep down underneath the water, which you're not going to see a whole lot of color. So they're all going to be kind of the same color for the most part, but they're going to have some highlights on top and some shadows in the bottom section. So I'm just going to slowly start to build up a little bit of blending going across them and then smoothing out the background by adding just a little more layers here and there. I decided to add in more of a true blue color, which is gives it a little more of a violet when you're, you've got all these greens on there. I thought that would be nice for contrast. And then once you get most of that color in there, remember you're going to have a circle cutting this out, so don't worry that it looks really messy. And then start adding bubbles. And bubbles are one of those things that if you start adding them, then nobody really sees anything under it. And the water is just supposed to be murky anyway. So I started with Colorless Blender and then I started putting on top of it a little bit of white pen. Sort of in a C shape across the top on most of them. And then a few of them I'll go back in and add a little bit more so that it's a little more of a round circle to it. That sort of thing. And I use a Uniball Signo white pen. is my favorite white pen. Next is making the porthole thingy, the frame, I guess you'd call it. I'm just, there's probably some technical name for it, for that thing with all the little widgets around it, to make that look like it's got silverish. So I just used a couple different grays and smooshed them around on there. And then taped it into the back of the shape that I had die cut it out of. And then I applied this glue. Now this is a glue that's kind of new to me. I know everybody else has been using it for a while, but it's a glue pen. It's uh, quick dry glue and it dries clear even though it goes on white so you can actually see what you're doing. And then I used some ATG tape around the outside and then had to trim a little bit of the excess that was on there. Put some dimensional adhesive on it. Bada boom, bada bing. Quick and easy, right? I love cards where you just have kind of some smooshy color on them. The one with the octopuses, the octopi, is a little bit darker than the one with the shark, so you can play around with whatever colors of blues and greens that you have and just smush the color around. Have some darker color behind each one of whatever fish that you use. I've added some lawn fawn twine on top and called it done. I have my sentiment stamped on the front of each one. Now the next one I wanted to try, the porthole die comes with a couple little things that go inside of it. There's a, a little starfish, there's some corals and kind of seaweedy things. So I put them down at the bottom because my, my mind was going toward putting the sentiment on this circle itself and just having some of those things down there at the bottom. So I die cut the first two and then die cut the third one so that it's kind of masked. If you've watched my videos and I do a lot of masking, if 
if you think of it as masking, then that other one is going to be behind them. So I'm going to color each of the pieces. I put a little extra dark coloring around the areas where these parts are going to be nested in. It's just going to give a little bit more contrast to them. And then smushing colors on top again. You can put a lot of bubbles on this if your blending doesn't come out great. It doesn't matter a whole lot because this is going to be really cute. Anyway, I use some bright colors, some orange and yellow and purple for my corals. And I put some scotch tape on the back. And that way, when I piece all this back together, this stuff's going to just stick to the scotch tape. It's a little bit of a pain to put together all these little tiny pieces because they are little tiny ones and you have to make sure not to lose them all. And then when it was all done, I taped it into the frame itself that was die cut. Made sure it was straight when I did that. Added some dimensional adhesive onto the back of it because I'm kind of making the designs for all three of these cards match each other. And then attach it onto the front. Now I should have done my stamping first, but I risked it and stamped right on top of my card. And it worked! Yay! And of course the twine up on top again. Nice simple little card, even though it's got a lot going on in it, it was a little fussy. It is actually a clean and simple card nonetheless. Next up is the waves. And this die can either be bought separately or it, you can buy it along with the porthole die. And I just put the waves across the circle and made it in whatever kind of orientation it came out to be. Threw some blue sky in the top section. Again, this is one of those really easy coloring things. It doesn't really matter. Just make each of your little sections different blues down here at the bottom, more ocean blues at the bottom and a brighter sky blue at the top. And it will automatically read as sky, whether or not you get all kinds of beautiful blending or not. And then you just have to reassemble. So now I've got tape across the whole circle so that as I reassemble all these parts and put them back together, I end up with all of them able to stick right in there real easily. Next up though, I needed to use the octopus because I love this octopus from subbing in. He just makes me smile. And I had an idea for a sentiment for this one because I recently got out my uh, sentiment set from a, a different release from quite a while ago. And it just kind of kept coming back to my mind. So I wanted to make this little guy stand out. So he is peeking up over the waves. I just stuck him in underneath. And then grabbed the sentiment set that has this one. Why fit in when you were born to stand out? And I just thought he would be really cute. Looking like he's standing out out there in the ocean. My final touch on that one was to add some white pen on the top of a few of the waves. Add the twine on. And he's... There are tons of things that you can do with this porthole die. And if you're interested in seeing the blog hop from a month ago, I'll have a link to that over on my blog and you can see what everyone else has made with it. And in addition to which, here are two cards. The one on the left I had already showed you, but the one on the right was a yellow submarine because I got lots of complaints that I hadn't done a yellow submarine when I made my blue submarine a month ago. So I thought that would be fun to make it fly in the sky. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button, share, subscribe. Just pass it on to your friends if you know that they love to do underwater cards. And I will see you guys again later. Take care. Have a great day.